show you what happens on the Donman side of things where we import those donations and the sorts of things that can go wrong and how to resolve those. So to begin with, we're going to have a look at a, a web page that uh, we have set up. Now I have a bookmark for that. So we're going to go to the Donman administration, oh sorry, I've gone to the wrong page, my mistake, the donate page. Now this is a very simple page. If you were to have one made up for you, typically you would have this with similar look and feel to your existing web pages. So there'd be background colors, background um, JPEGs or pictures that would make this look and feel like it was just one of your own pages. Normally this page would be linked to you or linked to from your own website. So there may be a button that says donate now, click here to make an online donation and when they click to it, it would take it to our web page. Now you'll see up the top here, the actual URL is uh, https secure.donman.net.au client and then there would be a different name here and perhaps the last part would be different for your own web page. Important to note, https says it's secure and you can tell that from this little lock sim symbol there. If that was not a secure website then you would just have like a, a little open um, rectangle there. And it is a Donman site, so it's not actually running on your website, but as I mentioned before, you will link to that from your own web page. There is another alternative way of using this, and that's to actually embed this page here, and we can see a little bit more of it down the bottom. You can actually make this as part of a frame within one of your own web pages. And the advantage to having it like that is that you can change all of the pictures and the, everything around it so that it's up to date with your own web page without us having to actually make any changes. So if you did do it that way, then you would actually have something very similar to this where it really is just the fields that a person can fill in. Now, for those of you that already have a web page with us, depending on how long ago it was, there may have been certain options that you could have. Um, our basic page was just a standard page, like it, It'll look pretty much the same as what we've got here. Um, and they would be able to put in their credit card details and those credit card details would be encrypted. And when you download the donations, you would decrypt them in Donman and so that you could then process those cards however you process your credit cards now when you do donation processing. Along the line, they introduced an option where there was uh, the ability to change different types. So later on when we get down to this, you can see that there's a drop down list of where a particular person can make a donation to. Initially that was a fixed list and if you wanted to change that, you would have to contact us and we would have to make those changes for you, normally at a cost. But um, along the way we introduced something called dynamic campaign lists and that then allowed you to add or subtract from that list um, to your heart's content and we'll have a look at that shortly. A bit after that we also introduced the online gateway so that when a donation was processed it would actually go to, to the gateway using the credit card details, process it immediately and come back with a response to say whether it worked or not. If it didn't work then the donor would have the ability to fix up whatever the mistake was and then resubmit that and if it did work then effectively that money was already in your bank. So depending on how long you've had your web page and whether you've chosen those particular options, you may or may not have some of those features. If you were to get a web page right now, as part of that you would always get the online donations and you would get the dynamic campaign lists as well. So when we go through this, I'll show you how to use those things, but for some of you that already have an existing page, it may not necessarily be possible. So what we have here is the basic details up the top. So the donor needs to put in their name and address details and basic stuff. And some of these can change. For instance, in this case, we've said we want the home phone number always, with a little asterisk meaning that it's a required field. We've got a work phone number here as well. For others, you might just simply ask for a phone number or maybe you'll have home, work and mobile. Uh, and there could be restrictions as to there has to be at least one of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, say, Mr. 
and if I put my name in here, because I've been playing around, I can use the autofill settings to fill in all the details. So I've got the surname, which is required. The company, if you want, you can put in there, but it's not a required field in this case, but on your own page you could make it required if you expected that. Position, street one, three two, suburb, state, postcode, all the basic things there, country. Um, home phone number, phone number, now it says it's required, so I'll just put in something there, oops, uh, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that'll do. Um, we've got a thing there, I'll just, well, that'll do. Um, now, some pages will allow you to put a donor number there, and so if you do put that donor number there, when that is imported into Donman, and that's what Gary's going to cover later, it will actually use that donor number and uh, look it up. Now, I think it will probably do a check on the surname to make sure that it matches, but assuming that everything is okay, then you won't have to do any deduping. It will automatically use that donor number. Okay, now, in the bottom section is where we put the details about the donation itself. So. In this case, we've got a few tick boxes for particular amounts. You don't have to have that. You might just have something that just says, how much do you want to give? So I'm actually going to put something in here that's going to make a mistake. Now, this web page that I've got, this demo web page, is actually using a test gateway. And with the test gateway, the dollar amount has to be a whole number of dollars. If I put something in that's not a whole number of dollars, like if I put in $10.50, I'm actually going to get an error. Now, the only reason I'm doing that is so that you can see what's going to happen. On your web pages, using a proper gateway, there won't be any problems with putting dollars and cents in. Now, down here where I was before, you've got this option where you can choose where you want that money to go to. And essentially, for each of these campaigns, it will pick a, oh, sorry, for each of these options here, it will pick a campaign that corresponds to a campaign on your Donman system. If it doesn't, then you'll have a bit of a problem. Also, when we have a look at it, this one that's where it is most needed, I have set it up in such a way that the campaign name is actually left blank, which means that when it gets imported, you can actually choose where you want that money to go to. So at the beginning of the year, you might put that into the Christmas appeal. Uh, at this time of year, you might just put that into your tax appeal. So even if they choose that, you still have the option of telling it where to go. And Gary will show you that when he does the import. Okay, so what's the credit card type? Well, we've got Visa and MasterCard. So I'll just use Visa. I'll use a dummy number that I know is going to work. Okay, credit card name, doesn't matter, I'll put my name there. And the CVN or that security number, I'll just make one up there. Okay. Um, expiry date, obviously it has to be into the future, so I'll make that 2016. Now here we have a choice of a single donation, where it's just a one-off payment, or a monthly donation. And if it's a monthly donation, then that will create a pledge record when it's imported into the system. All right, so this is actually going to give me an error message. Uh, I don't want to save that. Oh, I didn't put a, oh, it didn't complete the phone number. All right, so I'll try again. So a lot of these fields, especially the required ones, will give you an error message if there's something wrong with it. Okay, so in this case, it's come back with a status code. It's not a particularly meaningful one because it's only one that's pro produced from the test gateway. So if I just go back now, and I'll just make it $10. Oh, I don't know. okay. All right, so this comes up as for me as the donor to say, you know, it's gone through, it was transaction number, it was successful, it's $10, and there would have been an email sent to the donor as well, but you as the client will also receive an email. Now, we suggest that the email that you give to us to use for that is a generic one, so rather than addressing it to a particular person who may leave or go on holidays, um, typically, you would put it to something that's perhaps shared between a number of you. So at your end, you could say, oh, yes, I want this email to go to these three people. Then as the staff changes, you can actually change who that goes to, again, without us having to make any changes at our end. All right, so I'm just going to go back to that page, and I'll just clear it. 
and I'm clear. Uh, okay. Well, that's interesting. I'll just call it up again here. Okay. So the only other difference that I could do here would be if I chose to do a pledge donation. Now, I won't bother to do that because it's probably not really much different, um, apart from giving you the option of, um, well, some pages might give you the option of doing it monthly, um, yearly, quarterly. Um, I think on this page it's always going to be a monthly donation, so there's not really a lot to actually have a look at there. So. When you get a, a message saying that there's been a donation, you could, if you wanted to, download that transaction at that point in time, and then when you were next entering donations, you could import that. Or alternatively, if you're getting quite a number of donations across the day or across a period of time, you might say, well, I'm only going to download these tomorrow night once we've got a few of them, rather than doing it for every single donation that you're getting in. And that would apply especially if it's during an appeal. If it's between appeals and you're really only getting one every two or three days, you might choose to download it immediately you get that email. Now, in order to do that download, there is another web page that you can go to, which is the administration page. So you would have something that looks a little bit like this. You would be given a login name. Now, in this case, it's the demo admin one. And the password you'll be given as well. And this will bring up the admin page. Now, you've got four options for downloading the actual transactions. If you have dynamic campaigns, you also have this option for modify campaigns as well. Now, anything that's been entered onto the system as a donation since you last downloaded it will go into this current web donation file. So normally that would be the file that you would choose to download. So you simply click on the checkbox there and you click Next and that will produce this XML file here. So you can see in this case there's a couple of donations. Um, Gary will be explaining what this XML means or at least what some of the fields mean. But um, these are there's two donations effectively here. And in order for um, these to be imported into um, Donman, you need to Oh, no, hang on, I've got to try and get rid of something here. Okay, we need to go over to here, and I'm using Chrome. So in this case, I will say Save Page As. And in this case, I've already done this in the past, so it's going to my DM Work directory, um, and then I've created a subdirectory under there called WebDon, and I've stored all my current ones in there. Now, actually, if I can scroll that across, oh, not too easily. Um, you can see this batch number here. So this is actually batch number 125. The last one that I imported was batch 124. If I click on there, it sort of puts the same name there and I can simply go and change this to batch 125. Now you don't have to name them that, but to give them consecutive numbers is a useful thing to do. If you're using, say, Internet Explorer, if I go into here and I'll go to my admin page, and log in. Now, because I've already downloaded it, the current web page or the current batch is now empty, and any new donations will go into that. So, to get the same file, in this case, I would have to go to the previous web donation file. Now, you can also get the second previous and the third previous. So, at any time, you can get the current one or the previous three. So if you did download a file or someone else downloaded it and you don't know where it's gone, if it's the second previous, you can just download that. So if I do this now, I get the same one. And again, I've got the same two files there. And in this case, I go over to here and I go File, Save As, and we've already got the XML file there. But I could call it like File Web Batch 125A. So that's how you do it. Now, if you have a different browser, there may be different options that you need to use, but essentially that's what you need to do. So that then gets, and Gary does the import. He will show you how to actually use those files that you've downloaded, import them into Donman to create a batch of donations. Okay, so let me go back to our um, page. So the other option that we have here is this modify campaigns. So if I go next here, it will show a list. Now what you will see here is the same list that you saw when I 
clicked on the drop down box to say where I wanted my money to go to. So for each of these things you've got the campaign code. Now as I mentioned before, this one that's left blank, any donations where the donor says where it's most needed, it will be downloaded in the XML file with a blank there. So the import program that Gary will show you has an option there as to where that should go. And you can change that every time you do an import to go to different, um, different campaigns. And then for all of these other ones here, I've actually got specific campaigns and these names here must match a, a campaign name that exists in your Donman system. You'll also see this sort order and it simply uses that to work out how that list will appear when the donor clicks for a drop down list. If I want to add a new one and say I want it to come in after, um, maybe after autumn appeal, so autumn appeal is 15, I can just create a new one, so let's say the campaign was news 25, something like that, and I'll say current news letter appeal maybe something silly like that. And if I give it a number of say 17 and click on the add new campaign, that has now added that. So if I were now to go to my um, donation page and look at the drop down list, I would now have an extra option there that said current newsletter appeal and any donations to that would be downloaded to news 25. If you want to delete it, you can click on delete or if you click on modify, it puts all the details here and I can say actually that's meant to be news 26 and then I can save that away and then all of my things are there. So essentially they're the main features that are available on the web page. Now because each, each client's web page is essentially um, unique to them, then what they actually get on their screen could look different and there are a few other options that are available that are not part of the standard package but um, if there needs to be something done, some sort of particular formatting or um, some sort of tests that need to be done or extra questions then um, you can always speak to us to see whether that's possible. All right, so at this stage I'm actually going to hand over to Gary and he's actually going to take you through the process of uh, looking at what those XML files are and how to actually import those into your system. Good afternoon everybody, thanks for joining us, thanks Murray. Um, so looking at, at what Murray sort of shown you so far, it's really just looking at that's the web component of you know the web page, what you can do sort of behind the scenes. And as Murray has mentioned, when we do set up the dynamic campaigns, we want to make sure that we've actually got a campaign code in Donman that matches up to that. Otherwise, when we import the donation, it's going to give us an error and say, you know, there's not, uh, no campaign matching that. And it won't sort of override or do anything else. It'll just say it didn't import that particular donation. Okay. So once I've uh, downloaded my XML files from the website, and as Murray has said, Normally we'd suggest people just create under their DM work folder or their working folder um, a folder just called WebDon and put all those files there because for all purposes once you've uh, imported the data the XML file could, you know, you can go back and delete it. You don't know the need to sort of keep those things forever and a day. To import the actual donations once we've downloaded that, if I go into donation processing and depending on how up to date your, your uh, menu is, etc. You may have import web donations on the actual main uh, menu here for donation processing, or it may be on the left hand side over here where there's web donations. So as more uh, web donation sort of mechanisms have come into play with um, peer to peer for everyday hero, uh, go fundraise, my cause, etc., then it uh, sort of made sense to make a new menu to sort of allow a space to, to move those things across. So if I go across to web donations, and you'll see the very first one is import web donations. So this is not sort of a generic program for any web donations that people might get from any website. It's really just saying because the uh, data that's generated has come from a Donman website, we've got a good idea of what the actual data is. So if we just go and have a look at, <laughs> uh, sorry, I've resized my screen and as such my um, icons are all over the place. Okay, so if I go into Donman, DMWork, and WebDon, okay, so just like Murray is saying, 
normally just name your, your files as they come in in a sequential order. So in here I've kept one of my old XML files and it's just to show that there's a difference between if you've got the gateway on the website uh, and if you don't. So if you haven't got gateway on the website, the credit card details are still recorded. And if I just open that with Internet Explorer, and that has to think about it. Okay, so as you go through, you can see here's the same sort of details. I've got my batch number here, the donor's name, company name. So all of the fields that are on the donor on the donation screen are sort of reflected in here, where each of these uh, tags basically say that's where that bit of data is encapsulated. So as I go down on this particular one, you'll see here it's got the credit card number, but it doesn't look anything like a credit card number that we'd normally see. So in this case, the number has actually been encrypted, and at the time you go to import the data, you'll have a decryption key that uh, would have been given to you that when you run the program using that decryption key, it will then be able to turn that um, number into the actual uh, credit card number so it can actually use it to do banking and things like that. If you're using Gateway, of course, that's sort of irrelevant because the transactions already happened from the website. So when you get them in here, everything's pre-baked. So you don't need to sort of worry about that. If I look at one of the newer ones, most of the tags that you'll see are the same. So you've basically got you know, the batch number, the title, first name, surname, address lines, etc. And then whatever field reflect you know the data that you're capturing so in our case on the test one we didn't have telephone mobile um, but normally you would have that because <laughs> most people either give you their email or a mobile number rather than a home number from there whatever the person has selected on the web page will be the donation amount and if they've selected a campaign that lines up with what we've had on the web page uh, then this is where that will get populated so when I go to import this data I need to make sure that I've got a campaign called general so that, that money can be credited straight to that. In this case, you can see the credit card number is not a, is a credit card number either. It's basically a token. So in this case, it's a token from eWay, and this is the token number that's generated by eWay based on the credit card number and the expiry date. Yep. So that means that in this particular case, if I look up here, the donation type, which you don't really need to remember, <laughs> In this case, it's got a donation type of five and a pledge frequency of one. So that's telling me that when I import this data, even though the person selected general, it's going to um, create a pledge record for this person. And instead of having the credit card number that goes into the pledge record, this token will go there. And from there on, when we do auto deductions, you know, for the monthly runs, etc., then these are the details that get sent to the gateway. The gateway then translates that from the token into the card number to get, that goes to the bank to say, look, here's the, the actual details, and we'll go through from there. If it's gone through, you'll have a different tag down the bottom here, which is gateway, and this is basically a number that says that was the um, transaction number that went with this whole um, uh, donation that was made online. So that's really the difference as you go through. If I go down to the next one, you'll see I don't have credit card number and things like that, because in this case, it's saying it's just a one-off donation. So here it's got donation type one, and there is no pledge frequency. So when you look at the files, that there will be a slight difference in what you'll actually see on there, but it's really just saying that based on the import program that uh, we've got in Domain, we'll look at these uh, particular bits of data and say, okay, look, I need to do something else with these donations as they go through. Okay. So once we've got that, as Murray said, you'd go and save your XML file into your um, web DOM folder. And from there, in DOM man, I go back in and say, now what I want to do is actually import those. So if I go into import web donations, the first thing on here will ask me the name of my XML file to read. If I click on the drop down button, because this is the file that I've been using, then it will say, where's the file that you want to import? So in this case, this is my most current one, because Murray did 125 after. So if I select that, you'll see in this case here, there is a decryption key, but it's not necessary because um, this particular data has been used with a gateway. If I hadn't used the gateway, then I would have to have the decryption key. Otherwise, when I import the data, 
I'll get an error message to say that you know the card number was invalid because it couldn't be decrypted. From there, it's then saying if in the case of where Murray said there's a um, option on the screen where you can say you know where it's most needed, and you can say well if there is no campaign code you know um, in the donation record that I want to report, then here I've got the option to choose the campaign that I want that to actually go into. So it could be, you know, you say, look, it could be my current tax campaign or whatever campaign it is. You're saying, I just want to override. So in this case, I'm just going to say, well, look, if they haven't designated it, at the moment there's no special process or, you know, project that we're working on, so we're just going to put it into the general campaign. However, if my donation has gone in as a general donation or any other sort of um, campaign from the screen, especially if I've got specific areas of support on my donation screen where people can support you know, a particular facility or research or something like that, then what I don't want to have at the end of the day is, is a whole lot of different campaigns set up as you know, a campaign for a one-off donation as well as for a pledge. To get around that, I can then say what I want to do is say, okay, if any pledges are created, I've got my pledge campaign here. In this case, it's called auto-deduct. Yours could be you know, regular gift pledges, whatever you want to call it, as just saying I can have one, and because on the pledge record itself that we've looked at in previous webinars, there is the field which is the auto deduction ledger code. So I, that means that I can have multiple um, different mechanisms that people are supporting it for, you know, financially, but I then have to have a particular campaign for each one if they're pledges. So once I read those in, I can then say do, if I want to set the donation type to be something similar, and the donation type is a field that when you do normal processing, it, it may be uh, enabled or not, so you may see it or not, um, and people call it all sorts of different names. Uh, it might be called you know, um, dollar source, or it might be called uh, donation type or whatever, but it's just saying that if I've got money that's coming in for a particular campaign, and later on I want to know how much came from the website and how much was processed in the normal channels, then in here, I could go and say, yes, I've got a code already set up, and I want to know that these particular ones came from the web. So in this case, I don't have a code set up. So if I said, look, I do want to add something to these, what I'd have to do is then go back to my campaign setup menu, and you'll see here there's an option that says add or edit donation type codes. So if I just said, look, I'm going to call this web, Okay, so you can call it web or online or whatever you want to call it. It just gives us some way to identify donations that have gone into a campaign that came from the website. So when we go back into import web donations, okay, so again, because I haven't chosen or run that file through yet, I can choose that, choose my campaigns, and now if I click on the drop down list, I can say yes. These are web donations, so even though they might go into the general campaign, um, it will show that the actual transaction was sourced from the website originally. From there, the options to say, if I create a new donor, then the donor type would be individual, which most records um, on the website would be individual donations, not necessarily um, company donations. Okay, a source code would be a web, which will go on the donor's record to say that's where the donor came from if I created them. And then depending on your mail code, you might have something like, yes, they're on a mailing list, or you might have all mail, or, you know, tax, Christmas, whatever you want to have, um, to say that's the mail code I want to have for those people. The next option is to create an extra code. So if I wanted to assign something to each of these donors that I've created from the web page, I could do that. But for most things, because I've got a source code that, that says that they came from the web, um, Normally, I wouldn't use this very much, but it is an option that you can do. When people put the data online, most of the fields, as Mount Murray showed you earlier, are mandatory fields, which means you have to put something into the field. Um, so this one here shouldn't normally come into play. Because you can force someone to put something in a field doesn't mean that what they're going to put in is actually good data. So if somebody doesn't want you to have their address, et cetera, and they just want to make a donation, then there's nothing to stop them just putting in an A, B, C, D, E, F, because there's no way to validate addresses and stuff when you're online. You know, so a downside of web pages is sometimes you can't control what people put on there. Okay. 
but if by chance I, I did have a web page that those fields weren't mandatory and they're saying, look, if the address is incomplete, so there, there's no you know street one, there's no suburb, state postcode, etc., then automatically I'd make that no mail. If I perchance had a record that came through that said there is no name or address available, then I would credit the donation to my anonymous donor. So in this case, my anonymous donor happens to be donor one, you know, because I don't want to create records that are partial informational, or I might just have a first name, or I might have you know no contact details at all, because it's not going to help me manage the database later. Because this um, particular uh, XML file that I'm importing has been processed through the gateway, then I can say, yes, it's been banked already. Okay. If I was importing it where I needed to de decrypt the actual numbers, then I'd normally need to say, no, uh, it has been banked already, because I need to actually decrypt the numbers and have that as part of my banking, the same as my manual processing for the day. Okay. From there, the system's showing me that it will create an error file, so just RD web error, and a log file. And these will both come up and show at the end of the actual import. From there, I've got options that says decide on JUTS by email or decide on JUTS by similar name and postcode as the file is read. As Murray has said, if um, people do put a donor number onto the screen, like they know that that's their supporter number, pardon me, or reference number or whatever you've called it on the screen, um, then that'll match up straight away. But for most everything, you're saying, yes, I want to try and minimize the number of duplicates that I might be creating by doing this process by always checking both of these things. By default, it'll put your operator code in to say I'm the person doing these dispatcher donations and creating these people. From there, it'll then say, have we done a recent backup? If I say no, that's going to take me back to the menu. Okay. So if I say yes, and then it says, am I ready to begin? So I've basically now filled out the screen with all the details that I need. I've selected my batch number and everything else that I want to. From there, if I enter, in this particular case, it's saying I'm doing the same batch uh, again. So I can say, yes, that's fine. But normally, you won't get that. OK, so as it reads the records in, it's now saying there's a possible duplicate. So here I've got uh, Miranda, Miranda. And here I've got two other people with the same surname that happen to live. We go across in the same postcode. So it's saying there's possible duplicates. But in this case, I can see that they're not the same person. And so then I can just cancel. And the system will then continue reading the rest of that XML file. When it's finished, you're saying now the web donation is complete. The error and log files are now show. So if I just click on OK or Enter, it will then come up and show me that this one here had possible duplicates, which we already knew because we could see that on the screen. But it's also showing me that this particular donor that's been created has got an invalid postcode, so it didn't match the actual suburb state and postcode file. And this record here, as Murray has said, I've got one on the website that was Fun Run 2015, but it's saying that the transaction was skipped because I don't actually have a campaign in Donmen that I've set up already so that when I do these imports, I don't end up with this sort of problem. If I do have this, because I've got all the donor details, they would have been imported. I can go and now create my campaign and put that one in manually. Or because everything at the time I do the import goes into the new DOM file, the same as your daily processing um, that you do for checks and cash and everything else, what I could do is delete that whole batch, go and create my campaign, and import them again. In the case of one transaction, that's probably a bit of overkill. And so I wouldn't suggest you do that unless you know you, you had a batch of you know 500 or 600 or quite a large number. So you said, look, I don't want to have to go back and you know put in another 50 donations when I can sort of uh, fix it up by creating the campaign and importing the data again. Because the files are in that XML format, they're not very nice uh, and easy normally to go and actually edit to take records out. Um, it is possible. I mean, there are XML. Um, viewers and the editing programs around, so it wouldn't necessarily open in uh, Internet Explorer that you can sort of go through and fix records and re-import again. So if I said, look, OK, I've got this, and I wanted to edit the XML file, I could go and delete the other six people uh, and their transactions out of the XML file and just have this one left in the system for Joyce, 
go and create my fun run 2015 campaign and then import that just as a, a second run. So there's a couple of options for you know getting the details in if you do get an error. Okay. So normally I would print that out and say, okay, let's go and look at the errors so we can see what's going on there. If I've only got a couple, I might just jot down the donor numbers so I can then go back in and have a look. So in this case, this one here is just to do with the transaction. The previous one is just saying that um, there's an invalid postcode, which means that if I tried to go through that donor's record, it would stop me and say the postcode doesn't match in the file, and I'd have to select a postcode that actually did match. So if I said, okay, that's fine, I've looked at the error log, I've got any details I need to, I can then, as I said, either print that or close it, and then I'll get the actual um, the log file of what has happened, and it's now showing me that it's created these donor records. Yeah, so again, you could print that out and, and put it with the rest of your paperwork, or just say, no, that's fine, and just close that down. So once I've done that, looked at my log files, I can say finished. If I now go back to my donation processing menu, so we can now see down the bottom there's six donations in the temporary file because the seventh one in this case didn't import because I didn't have the campaign. So from there, I could go back in, create my campaign for the front run and process the donation for that last donor manually and that would then give me my seven donations that I could then do whatever I needed to. So in this case, there would be no banking uh, credit card listing to do because the payments have all gone through the gateway. But I could say, yes, I do need to receive those people. I do my ledger report and my end of day update as I go through. Okay. So if there is an error like that, um, there, there are ways around it. So in this case, it's saying that one of my donors had the invalid postcode. So if I go back in to donor entry, look at my donor, So as I go through, okay, if there was anything wrong, then it would have stopped me here to say, hang on, there's something wrong with that. What's probably happened as the data's come in in this case is that it's already said, hang on, I've mixed that up. So it's actually found the suburban state were correct, but the postcode was wrong, but it's fixed up the postcode and put the pre-sort code on as I've imported the data. Yes. So, so you can see all the three, two, three. Was it? was it? Yes. My bad numbering. Okay, sorry. Okay, so you can see in this case, there isn't a state. Okay. So if I were to go through there, I'm going to get the same sort of thing. because It's now trying to validate. So if I said, okay, well, it starts at 2, so that should be NSW. But still it's saying, okay, that's not there. So then I would have to go to the suburb postcode and say, okay, yes, I found one there for Johns River and that will then put the right postcode on. So if there's anything wrong with that, you can see the system's going to give you that uh, error log to say, here's the record, even though I wrote the number down wrong, um, and here's what's wrong with that. You know, so if for some reason someone had a telephone number in that was very long, you know, because they put two numbers into one field or, or two email addresses into the one field and they won't fit, then you'll get an error that says, no, nah, that didn't read in because the field's too long. Okay, so everything else has sort of come across so we can see, yes, Here's the donor record being created. We can see that uh, the acquisition date would have been the date of their transaction, which was yesterday's date, changed by me, so I've created it today and updated it. And then the donor source is the web. In this case, there's also a pledge record because this was one of the records on that XML file. <laughs> okay, can't do the pledge. Um, but it would have created the pledge record. So, sorry, that. The message that came up was because in my dummy system here, I haven't actually got a username and password for using the gateway as a live system. So when I go into the pledge, because I can uh, create tokens on the pledge records, it's just not allowing me in at the moment. So if I, sorry, if I just save my donor. Okay. And just disable my gateway processing. Okay, so now I can get into the pledge record. So you can see the gateway has more to do with um, the system than just actually doing the donations because the pledges are interacting uh, with the gateway when you go and put in the card details. Okay, so you can see all the details have come in. So even though the person on the website said, look, it's just a general donation, it's now gone into my campaign called Auto Deduct. 
it's got the dates that they've started, the dates of the next due, okay, last paid was basically yesterday's date, and then all the credit card details, etc., will be down here. So once I've done that, I can sort of get that through. The field that I was talking about previously was this ledger code down the bottom, and you can see at the moment, because this one was a general donation, um, I haven't run the option to actually say, look at the campaign and put the ledger code in, into the campaign. But just so that people know that that is an option that's available, that if you do have quite a, a, a number of different um, facilities or you know projects or things that people uh, can support on the web page, and when you read it in, you're saying, I don't want to have a whole lot of campaigns. I want to have one, like you just called auto deduct, something more general but I want the ledger code to be populated based on the campaign that I've got for the one-off donation, um, then that can happen. So that when I do any subsequent you know, monthly uh, auto-deduction runs, the ledger code will say, even though it's auto-deduct as the campaign, the ledger code down here would have the code of the um, project or facility that the person was supporting. So the money will always go to the right place as far as the accounts is concerned. Okay. Yeah. So, a fair bit happens, as you can see, when we do the actual import of the donations, because we're, we're not just doing the, the money. If I was an existing person, when they came up with a duplicate, I could double click and say, that's the person, and then the money would be credited to that person. Okay. In this case, all of these were new records. There was one that had a couple of duplicates, but it wasn't the same person. But everything else has sort of come across as we import the data and sort of say, yes, here's my donors, here's my donation, and go all the way through for the processing to finish itself. Yes, so because everything's in the temporary file, as it shows down the bottom here, I could then say, again, I don't need to do the banking, but I would do my receipting, my ledger report, and my end of day. If I had manual receipting to do, or manual recording to do after I've done the import of the web donations, then I can just come in here, say, yes, I'm starting a new batch, and choose you know, whatever details I need to actually add another batch. When I then do my receipting, ledger report, et cetera, it just means that I can have more than one batch in the new data, uh, in what, what we call the new don file, the new donation file, um, and that'll all be included when we do the reports, et cetera. So hopefully that's given people a bit of clarity of you know, how the web donations uh, can be utilized and, and some of the options that are available but the actual import process itself, the first time you go through, like most of the, the programs, when you're going through and saying, oh, you know, what do I want to have for this option, this option, all of these options as you go through, then you certainly can do that. And, um, you know, once you, you've made those, um, the system will store those as the default value. So the next time you come in, you don't have to go and choose all of those things all over again. Okay. So, I'll uh, hand back to Marla now and we'll do any questions and uh, things that people might have and we'll uh, see if we can get those all sorted. Thanks Gary. Um, yeah, a few questions are already posted but just a reminder to everyone that um, if they do have a question they can type their question in the question box in the control panel and click on the send button and we'll receive it and I can read it out for you. So that's the process. So just going back to the beginning of the presentation, um, Ida had a question about the mobile number information. She said, has the Your Details page been updated with the donor's mobile number information? Sorry, so it was Murray's that again? section. So Murray, when you were going through the, the do donor, the entry page? Yeah. And there was the phone oh, okay. number, the two phone numbers. There was a home number, I think, and a work number. A work number, so. that's correct, yes. Oh, okay, but each page would be uniquely set up for each particular organisation. So if they wanted um, a mobile number, then we would certainly add that. And it's a little bit unusual not to have the mobile number on there. Um, but that was just one that um, Ben set up for us fairly quickly. Okay, I hope that answers her question. Um, Anthea was just asking, um, is secure pay our favoured method? Well, basically um, we use secure pay or eWay. So you're going to say no something, Gary? As such. I was going to say, there, there's no favoured method there. Both gateways um, offer slightly different um, things depending on the, uh, the client themselves. You know, if, if you're somebody who does quite a few donations, then you may find 
that um, one of the gateways offers better pricing structure than the other for the sort of business you're running and the, and the volume that you're processing. Whereas if you're doing something um, and you're saying, look, we probably you know get a, a very small number of donations online, but we're having to change it, of course. But the, the pricing structure on the on the two systems is different, and that's why the options are there. Okay, and just um, and which system were you demonstrating today? Which gateway were you using? I was actually uh, using a test gateway, so sorry. But just the e-way e test one. Was it okay? You wouldn't really know once you've actually set it up. Um, the only thing that you would see was where there was that uh, token that Gary showed, where it was TE. The T is for token, the E is for eway. So in that case, it would have been an eway um, token. Whereas if it was secure pay, it would have been T for token, S for secure pay. But that's all really behind the scenes. You don't really need to worry about that too much when you're on the web page. Okay, and another question from Antia. Um, when the credit card donation changes to pre-banked and automatically goes to the bank, how can we check it's actually gone as separate from arriving in the account? hope that makes sense to you. <laughs> well, what, yeah, when, I mean, when that's the more to do with... Go on. I was going to say, when the donation gets imported and it's, it's from Gateway either manually processing or imported, then the pay method will be Gateway. I think uh, Anthony was talking about if you actually use the donation processing gateway. So if you've manually entered a credit card donation and it goes through the gateway, then of course that's when it changes it from Visa or MasterCard or whatever to gateway. Once it's actually been processed through Donman, Donman uh, doesn't have any details there, what you would need to do is log on to the actual gateway website and check what transactions have gone through. Um, Parul has a question about um, how, how about PayPal and BPay donations and Anthony just says thank you for that last clarification. <laughs> um, I'm not aware of any of our websites doing either of those. Okay, also from Parul, how can we import the donations from external web forms? Can you help in setting that up? It, it would depend on the structure of the data that you could get from the external web forms that you may then need to have a custom program written to import that data. Because as I said, the, the one that we've got in Donman here is really built around um, the, you know, the file that we create because we know what all the fields are and, and what to expect and not to expect, whereas when it comes from an external site, um, the fields could be in any sort of order and have different values in there. And you may then have some, you know, further customization to say, okay, on ours we've got something where people can choose, you know, five different areas of, of things that they want to hear about, or you know, how do they hear about us, or all sorts of options that um, would then dictate what's going to happen with the data when it gets imported. Okay. And just back to the um, the gateways, um, Carmel just had a question about the cost to set that up. Um, if you go to either eWay or SecurePay, both of them have a pricing structure um, on their web pages that will show you what their current pricing is to set them up. The other component of that, sorry, the, the two parts are yes, you need to have the gateway. So for a gateway account, you also have to have a merchant internet account with your bank because that, that's the account that um, eWay can or SecurePay can actually utilize the transfer of the money into. The component for Donman um, is, as Murray said, if you're getting a new web page, then the gateway processing is, is included for both Donman and the gateway. Um, the actual gateway as a sort of one-off without a web page, I haven't got the price, sorry, um, right in front of me, but if you wanted to contact Val, she'll be able to tell you what that is, or we can you know, contact you later, but I just don't have it right in front of me. I think Alex is saying it's 550. Oh, there you go. Alex would know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, 
Okay, that looks to be all of our questions uh, for the moment. So we might wrap it up there. If there is any more questions, you've still got a moment to po um, post them and we can follow up with you offline with those. So, um, so thank you Gary and Murray for the, today's webcast and thank you everybody for joining us today. Obviously an interesting topic. We had um, a really good number of attendees today and lots of good questions. So thank you for joining us. Our next webcast is scheduled for Tuesday the 16th of June, again at 2 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So we'll be sending you details uh, shortly of the, uh, the topic and details of that webcast. So look in your inbox shortly. Now you will also find recordings of all of our webcasts on the Donman website. So go to donman.net.au and go to the What's New section. We also post them in our monthly newsletter that you receive via email. So have a look there. So if you do have any further questions, uh, you've got time to pop them into the GoToMeeting system now or you can follow up with us offline at info underscore donman at advsol.com or give us a call of course. Okay, that concludes our webcast for today. Thank you all for joining us and goodbye.